Hi, I'm Phil Roper, number 15 for Great Britain. I'm talking today to Phil Roper from uh, GB and England, and we're going to discuss uh, his stick, how he sets it up. Uh, first of all, Phil, I see a stick which I'm not quite so familiar with. Uh, what's this stick? Uh, it's a relatively new brand. It's a uh, Y1 Hockey. Okay. Uh, it comes from uh, founder Tom Carson from the Great Britain Group. Hold it. Who's out here? Yep. So here we have it. Y1 Hockey. So we get a good look at that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. This uh, model is the LBX, which stands for Lobo, as, as okay. most people play with nowadays. And then the X is the uh, top of the range, uh, kind of as nearer to 100% carbon as you as you go. Yeah. Um, it's obviously pretty low bowed. We uh, kind of helped a little bit with the design of the stick, so how we like it and what we what we're looking for really in a in a really nice touch uh, shaped stick. Basically. What's the length of it? It's a 37 and a half. Okay, so just hold that up against your thigh, put down the ground there, just measure it up against your thigh there, just one second please. So I just want to measure that against your leg. That's a very handsome pair of slippers there. Okay, that's good. Let's just measure that fits there. Okay, now you just tee yourself up again here, just come forward a fraction. Perfect. Okay, can I just have a, a lend of that for a second? So let's just show this ball. So it's a relatively, oh, it's quite a low ball as well. It's got yeah. quite a kick in the head, as we can see. Yeah, and it's sort of this way on, that way up. So yeah, that's, uh, and then, okay, let's have a look at the strapping. Now you've got uh, different strapping again. So uh, what are you using and, and why are you selecting that particular kind of strapping? Yeah, so it's just a, um, a regular, the regular grip that it comes with underneath this. And then I've got a, a chamois, uh, uh, it's called Shamtech. It's a really nice grip. It's got small, tiny little holes in. Basically, that, yeah. that's I think to help with moisture and especially being out in a country like Malaysia where it rains a lot, it really helps with the grip because if it gets too wet, you don't want it, the stick sliding off. And it's obviously quite low, quite like when you when you're dribbling, keep keep your hand nice and low so you've still got the grip down the stick. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have a look at the end of the stick here, just give the folks at home a bit of a look at that. So we can see you've taken the cap off the end, um, there's one or two players I've yeah. seen have done that. Other players, uh, they leave the cap on, normally it, it flares out towards yeah. the, the end of the stick. Uh, why did you remove the cap? So on my other ones, uh, it's actually got the cap, it actually came like this, I didn't remove anything. Okay, is that your normal way that you play? Uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter to me. Some people say that having a little rubber cap makes a big difference. Yeah. For, to be honest with you, I don't think it does. Some people say that the rubber kind of helps with the touch of the feel. I don't. I'm not sure. I believe in that type of thing. No. Uh, this is just a regular hard cap that it came. Where you get the two different options. Yes. I didn't select any of them. This was just how much to pay because I say I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but some of my other ones do have the rubber cap, and I'm not sure I ever could yeah. really tell the difference. Uh, just I've noticed, especially there's a couple of players in the Indian team, for example, Sardar and also Bobby uh, Rikindapal, and they actually tape the end of the stick ah, yeah. and build up probably a five or six mil extra knob almost at the end of the stick to stop mm -hmm. the hand from slipping off yeah. the end. Uh, Jamie Dwyer, for example, just exactly like you, he actually removes the, that cap and it runs away to nothing. Yeah. But most of the sticks, they have a little bit, but not much. So that you don't find that's a problem. Never find as long as you, know, long you keep all your yeah, stick, I suppose. Never, it's, never uh, <laughs> Hopefully you don't see that too flying out my hands too often. <laughs> well, not so far, that, that's for sure. Um, OK, so uh, do you know the actual weight of this particular stick? Yeah, that's about 525 grams. And the balance point? No, I'm not sure about the balance point. Actually. So that doesn't matter to you. Some people are particular about numbers. Other people, are just, yeah. they feel the weight and the balance. I mean, I just they, feel what, happy. Yeah, when you get the stick, you, you want to know if it's really head heavy. You can tell straight away, yeah. and you should be able to tell. And if it's you know if it's, if it's not heavy enough, when you start hitting through the ball, and the ball's not going as far, then you can really tell. With for me, as soon as I get the stick, you know you have a little knock, and you can really tell straight away whether it's a stick you're going to like or it's a stick you're not going to like so much. Yeah, for, for, for club players and the like coming up, um, when they're looking at selecting a stick. How would you recommend they actually go about that? Because as you know, until you actually get the stick in your hand, and sometimes not until you play with the stick can you even tell, but of course with the cost of yeah. a stick these days, that can be prohibitive. What would you recommend? 
Yeah, to be honest with you, I, th I think it completely depends on what type of player you are to start off with. Yeah. Um, it's really important if you're if, if you're a forward who likes to score a lot of goals, then you need to be going for a, a higher carbon stick because you're probably going to be hitting the ball and wanting to hit the ball and really get the power game. Yeah. If you're more of a finesse or if you've got more skill, you might be looking at more of a low bow because the ball will stick to your stick more. You might be looking at a lower carbon so you get the touch of yeah. the stick because the, normally the lower carbon you have, the better touch, the better feel you're going to have when the ball's hitting your stick when you're trapping it. Um, now this isn't this isn't generic with every stick. Some yes. sticks have found out. I, I find with this one, which is the LBX, that actually combines a bit of both. Yes. So it's got a really nice low bow, and as well as having a high carbon rating, I still seem to maintain that feel, yes. which I get, which is really really nice. Which is why I actually play with this particular <laughs> model. Um, but yeah, it's it's really dependent on the player himself or yeah. herself, you know, whatever you want, whatever you feel like, do the research and work out what you really want most in a stick. Some people really want the power, they want the power, so you've got to go high carbon. Yeah. Some people really want the feel, some people really want the dribble, you know, you want the, even the heaviness, you want the tackle, you want to get behind the ball when you're tackling someone. Yeah. That's the type of thing you've got to be thinking about. With the ball over the stick, would you recommend any particular ball, a low ball or a high ball for, let's say, a forward? Uh, as, as opposed to a defender, in other words, would you recommend one for a forward and one for a defender, or do, again, does it depend? I think it does depend, but you'll probably see more forwards having low bows. I would, I would guess, because uh, you want to get it's easier to get under the ball for your 3D skills when you're carrying it around the D. Yeah. Um, it's easy to get under the ball if you want to be lifting the ball into the net when you want to be scoring. Uh, you know, it gives you them options. Um, as a defender, you're probably more likely to have a, a mid bow, you know, a dribble bow, anything yeah. like that to, to, you know, because you want probably a little bit more consistency in your game. You want to be, if you're looking at a bit, being a passing player, you just want that consistency of, I'm going to pass it straight there, and I don't yeah. want to have to worry about a low bow to, yeah. to get it there. Yeah, 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 just be able to hit the thing if you have to, and yeah. not, not worry about it rising off the yeah. turf too much. But that's that's very generic, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not telling any, every defender to have that. No, 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 everyone's there, there on, but as a general, I mean, coming from yeah. people who have been playing hockey at the highest level, it's good advice, especially for club players and people sort of moving on through and trying to make decisions about what they should be definitely, going for. Definitely. So sweet. Okay, well, Thank you very much for that, and good luck with the rest of the tournament. A good win for you guys yesterday, so that's um, four points on the board. Three teams on four points now here in Malaysia. Yeah. So basically, um, it's game on from tomorrow by the looks of things, because tomorrow could be the decider. It's a big game tomorrow, though. Yeah. Malaysia, always fun to play Malaysia in Malaysia. Well, Malaysia, at home, they are a force to be reckoned with. They, they succumbed to Australia yesterday. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Australia generally has one bad game in a tournament, and that was their first game <laughs> uh, against New Zealand. So yeah. Malaysia was always going to suffer yesterday. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's the way history tends to go. But thank you very much for that. That's right. Um, and we'll call. Cool.